Hey everybody, welcome to a tutorial video. I'm going to break down uh, what I did in Wicked Game, how I looped it, probably a few changes. Um, but firstly, thank you so much for your comments and love on that video. Um, I nearly didn't upload it, but I did. You guys seem to have enjoyed it, so thank you. And uh, let's get into a little breakdown of how I loop it and effects and things like that as well. Okay, so first things first. Uh, the effects that I use, let's just run through the different parts for the little groove. Uh, and I need to explain, um, my guitar is uh, a little bit worse for wear at the moment. Um, the little connections, oh yeah, uh, a little bit dicey. So when I, when I do some of the loops, then uh, I end up getting this little crackling sound, which obviously I'm going to get fixed and sorted out. But if that happens, then you know what's going on. So, first section on the loop, I kick on the octave pedal, the OC3. I've got another video obviously explaining the settings that I use for this, but the difference is it just gives a little bit more bottom end, there's that crackle, that pop. Gives a little bit more bottom end than the, man, this is gonna be annoying for my show this afternoon. It gives a little bit more uh, bottom end to that groove. So let's see if I can get a groove in without, without that. And the first thing I do is, which is basically kick, snare, kick, kick, which is the, the and snare then, which is the, the basic groove from the song. Um, fingers crossed. Okay, I think we're gonna have to go with it today till I get this issue sorted out. Um, but I record the basic groove I've got the OC3 on. I then, in the loop video, in the cover video, I just add to that snare sound with a string slap. So that's what you get. Uh, I should have moved my hand a little bit. You can hear a little bit of the uh, harmonics wanting to come through. So anyway, the point of this is to actually teach you what I do and mistakes that I made along the way. I kick the octave pedal off and now we've got the guitar parts, the guitar chords. And this is going on loop two. So that's in there. Now, after watching the video, I um, I realized I break a bunch of my rules. And I actually put the bass line in and it just takes a long time to get started. So I think for live shows now, I'm gonna do that much. The groove, I probably won't even put the snare in straight away, that extra part. I'll do the guitar part and then I'll just go straight to that little lead line. It just takes a little bit less time to get there. So then we get... So, this is where now I would actually record the bass. The desire will make foolish people do. So, I switch to bass on the Voice Live 3. The OC3 pedal is off. I just use the OC3 to 
build up my groove. Um, and I would record now the bass while I sing. Okay, so I'm not singing. I wanted to put it in so that you can hear clearly what the bass is doing. It's not exactly the bass line that's played. It's more, much more interesting in the song. But what I'm doing is just matching the bass with those kick, um, that groove, the kick and the groove. So we get... And um, I tend to play kind of like I would if I was playing bass with just some of these little kind of fake slides. They're not really a slide, but... It just, for me, adds a nice little touch to what's going on rather than a very robotic... Um, So again, you've got to create your flavor and do what's right for you. Um, you might be an excellent bass player. You might like making it. Doing a different bass line, doing what suits you. But obviously this is going to repeat throughout your whole track. So if it's too complicated, if it's too crazy, it can maybe take away from what you're trying to achieve with a song like this. So. That's all the parts that are, that are recorded now in my loop. We had this initial groove with the... We added a snare, just a little fill out that sound, a little bit more. We added the guitar part, just the chords. And I do do a little slap when I do that. And then we added the bass line. Just the root notes of those chords and matching the rhythm of the kick drum. So that gives us everything. Set. The lead part. Obviously, I don't have a, a whammy bar on my acoustic guitar. So what I've set up on the Voice Live 3 is a lead setting. So it's got it's running an overdrive, a little bit of gain on the, the amp because I have an amp and an overdrive pedal running on the Voice Live 3. And I also have a little delay. So it just gives a little bit more love and um, space to playing this, especially the lead like this, that's so, oh, it's like, yeah, so good. So what I've had to do to, to copy that lead line is you, the, the lead, the notes are essentially, which is, again, I'm tuned to E flat, but I'm going to say it like it's tuned to E, would be an A um, and then an F sharp. So both at the seventh fret. But to get that sound for the, uh, the lead, I start this first note at the 6th fret, already bent. And then I can bend it down, so... And then I start the F sharp, the second note, at the 6th fret also, but I bend it starting from the F up. So if you want to copy it, start with this note bent, and then your next note you start with the normal note and bend it up to the note that you want. Um, that's kind of the best way I've found to get a little bit of that love um, from the, the the original recording, given that we don't have that, that whammy bar to do it. So that's really all there is to the song. There's only one thing left. In the live version, they pair things back 
for that third verse rather than having the loop just keep repeating cranking through same dynamics that we naturally have um, when we get to that third verse I drop it back okay so what I do when we get to there is I've been on a lead guitar setting so um, da -da, da -da, da. and you'll see if you watch the cover version of I d that I did I actually miss out the last bit of that lick to give me some time uh, mentally to just concentrate on changing guitar pedals. I've gone from a lead sound that I need to kick that off. I also kick a slight delay on just to my acoustic guitar sound. So it fills a little bit more space than if I completely stripped it back. And I also kick on the OC3, so that gives me a bit of that bass in again. So that's what I'm changing. And here's the time I have to do it. Um, I also switch to just holding the pick in my <laughs> second finger so I can use my fingers again to play. Anyway, here's the switch we've had. That's the bit I skip off. Okay, changes. And the world was on fire. No one could save me but you. And so all that's looping now is that track one, just that groove with that really annoying little electrical clipping, zapping sound. <laughs> it's gonna drive me insane this afternoon. I'm gonna to have to use uh, loops, I think, from just this and from my uh, from my phone. But we'll figure it out. So I, ho I hope you caught that. I just skip off the last little bit of the in the in the cover version. I don't play that. It gives me a little bit of space to switch buttons and be ready to the world was on fire no one could save me but you strange what desire will make foolish lovers do well I never dreamed that I'd meet somebody like you I never dreamed that I'd lose somebody like you No I Okay, that's it Now that I get to it That's the only other part we need to cover Is I've been playing With an octave pedal on I've been playing the chords And there's a little slight delay when I go into that last chorus. What I do is, we've had this, um, I kick off that groove just before um, the chorus starts. I kick on everything and then I start playing the with the acoustic sound just for timing so the first two notes are still an acoustic sound before I get to switch to that little electric lead sound so it's hard to notice in the video but it's actually not perfectly in time with the switching of uh, the loop and the lead part so just for that bit, let's do it. Um, well, I never dreamed that I'd lose somebody like you. 
no way Don't wanna fall in love No way Don't wanna fall in love With you No Nobody loves no one. Same story at the end. Just before I kick the loop off, I switch from this lead sound back to an acoustic sound. And I just, I hit on that little extra delay that I've got there. Just to, just to bring up the space and, and have that fill a little bit more space so it's not going from a big loop to just purely turtle little guitar so I use a delay to achieve that anyway I hope this has been useful to you um, Mike cheers for the comment I wouldn't have thought to do a video on this <laughs>